Hey, Rifters, welcome to the show. Subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. We're also on Spotify and Anchor. Tell a friend. Um, follow us on social media at Reza Rifts, R E Z A R I F T S. Uh, we're trying to get to those 100 reviews on Apple Podcasts and all that jazz. Uh, this interview is going to be great. Alan Lee joined me today. Um, so I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. We, uh, our guest was from Chelsea Lately Comedy Central and the Egyptians, John Stewart, um, the great Basim Yusuf. And he'll also be performing at the Bray Improv June 25th through June 26th, 2021. Buy your tickets at www.brea.improv.com and support them. Uh, and follow Basim on social media. And uh, he has a remarkable journey, and we're excited to hear from him. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the show, and we'll see you next week. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee, right here on LA Talk Radio. Why is the recording in progress? We have a great guest tonight, a dignified man compared to some. Uh, what you Alan, know. we're on, man. Oh, my God, it's it's. Yeah. it's, it's I hey, Bosom, how are you? I'm so sorry, Riza. Listen, I this is, has been a very difficult week, and I'm so oh. sorry I kept changing everything. Thank you so much for being so uh, flexible. Of course, no. Thank you so much for doing it. I know, I know. Uh, I kind of like uh, drew myself on you at the show. Like, no, yeah. man, no, no, it's all good. It's uh, it's just gonna be. It was difficult, but it's it's an honor. It's a pleasure to do. It's an honor to have you. Oh. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Uh, so uh, it's late show. <laughs> look, look, he's here tonight, and uh, he, he's tired. He's got he's got things to do, and he, he generously is here. Thank you. No, of course, it's my pleasure. Now, Bossom, I wanted to I wanted to ask you because uh, I saw you at the Huntington Beach Comedy Show, and uh, you were fantastic, mm-hmm. and. I wanted to see what was it like. Tra- like, did you do comedy in Egypt besides your show? Did you do stand up in Egypt? No, not at all. Uh, I, for all my life, I was just uh, a regular doctor. Yeah. Uh, for seven years, I studied medicine, and then twelve years after, I was a heart surgeon. So a total of nineteen years. And I actually got. Uh, I passed all my USMLE exams, and I was accepted in a fellowship in Cleveland. So I was going to Cleveland, and then the. And th- my life was a very routine kind of uh, mundane life of a doctor, you know. Uh, you know, I, I had my personal life, you know, playing sports, whatever. But I just did medicine. That's all I did. And uh, then the revolution happened. The Arab Spring happened. Arab and then after the revolution, I was kind of like looking at was the media was, you know, did during the revolution basically lied to the people, tell them that it's a whole kind of conspiracy theory. I, I joke about that. I say it's like Fox News on steroids, ecstasy, and cocaine. But uh, not, and, CNN as well, just to be equal. Uh, no, I don't think they're equal at all. I don't think CNN and Fox <laughs> no, no, News are equal hard. whatsoever. No, I, 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 I mean, point of view. I, I mean, CNN is not, CNN, my, my point of view is CNN is, is not perfect, but it is definitely oh. not like Fox News. None definitely. of them. None of them are perfect because we are all imperfect. Absolutely, but Fox News is evil. I mean, I think Fox <laughs> News is de- is is deliberately. They are like they're always been a platform where conspiracy theorists and the alt right and the extreme racist people go, and they are racist. So you can. It is kind of like maybe maybe all of the media outlets are incompetent or not doing the best job. We can argue about that. But we're talking here about a, a very dangerous message that's been but delivered you know, by you one. You stood up in the Arab Spring, and I wanted to make this point to you. You stood up, and you became an honest witness of what's going on, and that's a form of honest journalism. And my problem is, is that when someone stands up like you like this, and you tell the truth, you are, in my opinion, and others, better than the media. Because it no, means no, but I'm reporting. I'm not I'm not a you news report, show. Well, you report, which is the truth, the truth. But I, I wasn't. Uh, but there is a difference between reporting the news and satirizing the news. It's a total, and that's kind of the mistake 
even even John Stewart said that. So like we are not a news program. Sure. I know that a lot of people turn to the to the Daily Show to get their news, but that is wrong. And yeah. It the, in, the, and shows the incompetence of the news media. But anyways, uh, I'll, I'll we'll get back to the whole media thing. But the uh, uh, anyway, so uh, I was always a fan of John Stewart. Watched him since I was like I was growing up, and it's like it was like an un unattainable dream to have a show like this in Egypt, of course. So there was kind of an opportunity of a period of fluidity after the um, the, the, re the revolution of the Arab Spring. And I kind of like started to do these shows online, very low budget, just like showing the hypocrisy of the media and how they lie to the people. And I didn't think it would go anywhere. And then like uh, just like two, three weeks, millions of people watching, suddenly I have offers from TV network to be on television. And I have absolutely no experience in comedy and performance in television, media, nothing. And it was a really like a, a leap of faith. So I, I tried it and then it succeeded and succeeded more and then it became the biggest show. And then the, that's how the, the transition happened from medicine to comedy. Now, did you write, like, did you have other writers or was it all just you? No, we were writing together. I, it, okay. it wasn't, at the beginning on the internet, it was just me. Then we started hiring writers uh and it was also like very small scale and the thing is there there is not that kind of industry in egypt yeah the yeah. industry of writing for shows that mm -hmm. is not we were the first one who actually did that okay. because i went to the, the daily show and i visited them for two days i shadowed their team so the, the idea of having dedicated writers for a comedy show or even any show is not even something that that middle east has Mm -hmm. yeah. These were like journalists that were and in the morning they, they work out in the morning they work in the, their uh, newspapers and at night they were moonlight for TV. That was the kind of quality of media that was there. So when I started to ask for people to work with me full time, the big shots in the business couldn't work with me. So I hired all fresh out of college people didn't even have any experience from the media like me. So we're basically a bunch of newbies doing something that was never done before in the Arab world. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Were you like a little scared though? That like uh, all the time. Yeah, because like your time. jokes could probably like offend. Like jokes can offend anybody, but like the United States were free and Egypt's not. Like were you? Oh scared? no 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 no! I wasn't that kind of afraid. Oh, okay. I wasn't. I wasn't that kind of afraid from the repercussion. I was afraid to be a to do bad comedy. Oh, I was okay. more worried about writing badly or doing a bad show. Than, than stepping on the toes of the big powers because you will step on their toes anyways. And that's actually, that's political satire. Yeah, that's a good point. I like that. Yeah. So I was actually worried about the quality of the show than the show being crossing any lines. And uh, that, that was kind of the, under the Islamist. I was arrested and uh, interrogated under the military. I was canceled a few times and I was chased by legal uh, and non-legal uh, pursuit. And I had to escape eventually from Egypt. Yeah. Wow. And they, they thought uh, John Stewart like hired you to be a CIA uh, yep. or something, right? Like yeah, I was recruited by John Stewart by uh, through the <laughs> FBI. Wow, mm. which is, is uh, one of the that was written about me. That's kind of Fox News kind of reporting, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Now. Uh, and now you, you also uh, you wrote a book too. Like, you... I, I, I wrote two books. A book about my story. It's called The Re Revolution for Dummies, uh, and that was when I came from Egypt. And the ne other book is uh, a, a children's book. It's called The Magical Reality of Nadia for my daughter. Oh, do you think the writing is like easier for you since you know you're you're a doctor and you have experience and like. That's stuff, or do you think the comic and you made it easier to write? Well, this whole thing is very new to me. I mean, it was new to me when I did it in Egypt, but here in America, it's even much more difficult because it's a stand-up, which I never did, and it's in an English language, which is my second language. That's amazing. So to start doing something that you have never done before at the age of 45, I never did stand-up, and I never did it in my own language even. So now to start it with in a second language as the first go is something very scary and very wow. uh, intimidating. And uh, 
so I mean, writing is easier. I mean, and I have to say, I, w I didn't write the book alone. I had a co-author. She was a wonderful woman uh, from Scholastic. Uh, and she, she I, I mean, I created the world, but she kind of breathed the life into the characters. But writing comedy is something. Performing it is something else. Doing it live in front of an audience is something completely different. Doing all of that in your second language, something out of there. Have you ever thought about uh, doing a special and then like, because I know you don't want to go back to Egypt, but like you could release it in Egypt. Have you ever thought about doing like that? I don't care about releasing anything in Egypt. I want to do a special to be bought by Netflix, like all of the other comedians and be on the platform and it will be watched worldwide in Egypt or otherwise. I don't specifically care about if it would, it will be, if it's on Netflix, it will be worldwide, including Egypt, but I really yeah. care about making it here. I, I have put whatever happened to me in Egypt behind my back. Yeah. I have I, now like a goal is to penetrate this world of, of, of that that's a lot that's that's that has a lot of competition between it and it's it's hard so you just need to work on it. Is the is the food out here uh like cuz I I'm sure like we don't have the best fruits and vegetables in your taste, do you know what I mean? Like it's different. I, uh, I mean, it is true that the fruits taste better back in the Middle East, but so, some stuff here are amazing. The avocados here are much better, you know. Uh, the bananas are decent. The, 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 the watermelons are okay. The, my, uh, I only miss one thing, which is the mangoes. The mangoes is something else. Uh, so you, you don't eat whatever, whatever you have here, the, the, you can call them cucumbers. These are not mangoes. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, but, otherwise, sure. but, uh, but, but otherwise, but but otherwise, I I love living in Los Angeles, by the way, because I am vegan. So the options here are endless. Yeah. I I think Los Angeles is vegan heaven, and uh, I actually enjoy eating here more than any place in the world. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's cool. But yeah, they don't have the mangoes. <laughs> yeah, well, we smuggle them from Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. When, when you get adventured into stand-up comedy, because you obviously had like a uh, comedy, you know, experience with your show, did you think that it was a different uh, adventure? Like it's, different? It's, no, it's totally different because it's not just changing language; it's changing the mood of the language. Yeah. People in each language are used to to have their information, their jokes, their humor, their performances in a certain way. There's a different there's a different wavelength for each language. It's all yeah. nuance. You cannot like there's not just a news, even the rhythm of how you speak, even the way that you deliver, the punchline, the everything, like the, the, the pauses, all of that is different. It's it's a totally different mood. And I got so immersed into doing that that it is now it is harder for me to write stand up in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Interesting. Mm. Have you ever met uh, John Stewart since you're compared to him a lot? I was on his show four times and he came to my show in Egypt. Oh, really? How was that? I mean, it's a simple Google search, man. It's on the, 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 the show. The show <laughs> saw the sh him on, on Stewart. The show, the show, just if you Google best music of John Stewart, he, he actually came to my show in Egypt. He was a guest on my show. Oh, uh, I Googled it and I just saw you on, with Trevor Noah. So, yeah, but no, but I was with John four times, and I was co co with Colbert a couple of times too. But with John, I, I, I mean, he was wonderful, and he came to support me in Egypt when I was having trouble. Oh, that's awesome! Now, how cool is it to be like on the panel on like late night talk show hosts instead of when you're not interviewing, you're the you're the person who's being interviewed? Is that like a different? It's good because for me, this is exposure. And being exposed, being introduced to the American public. I mean, I find that people here in America are very acceptable of people from other cultures when it comes yes. to comedy and performance and art. Yes. Yeah. They are actually very curious about. And there is something, listen, we, I know that we joke about Americans a lot and we joke about white people a lot. It's a very easy target and we talk about that. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, uh, Americans, I mean, the, the, the intelligent ones, <laughs> uh, because there are stupid people everywhere, not just America, but like, they are actually like, oh, what do you think about us? Tell us, tell us, rip us apart, make fun of us, make fun of us. They, they have, I mean, and, and the thing is, it is, 
there are, these kind of people are everywhere, but here it's more, as in volume. Because I think if you are kind of like confident about who you are, you don't care really. I mean, you have, sure. you have this kind of open thing sure. and being critical of something doesn't mean that you hate it. Right. And that's the problem of the, the conservative, the right-wing people, the, the fanatics who always make a big deal about criticizing things. I mean, they, that's why this is one of the talking points about the right wing against the left. So like, oh, those people hate America. Those people, you know, have some sort of a low self-esteem as being American. They're ashamed of being Americans. While the people on the left, they actually do all of this criticism out of love that they want their country to be better. So, and that is like the game that, that, that's, that, that the right wing plays everywhere. Uh, Marie Le Pen, which is the leader of the right wing in France, one of the very big uh, right wing uh, parties in France, they, she also uses that language. Those people on the left hate France. They, 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 want to be, they want you to be ashamed of being French. So this whole thing about like criticism for love versus we should be proud whatsoever and anybody who talks shit about us, like, you know, he's a, he's a traitor and he's bad and our country becomes number one and we're the best people in the world and everybody else is shit. That kind of like chauvinistic kind of feeling is very characteristic of the right wing and not just in America, not just in Europe, even, especially in the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, and now, so another question, like, do you still uh, practice medicine out here too? Or did you drop that just to do comedy? No, I don't. I haven't practiced medicine since I kind of my show in Egypt. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right. Like, mm -hmm. cause you enjoy doing comedy more. Yeah. Yeah. So how is it like trans, like, cause you get into clubs a lot now. Like, uh, is that, harder for you was that hard for you when you first got here or did you just oh yeah at the beginning it was very bad until i kind of managed to get a residency in joe's pub in new york and kind of like worked my material for six months six weeks and it got better and then i started going touring and with each time i travel and i explore you get better so yeah. I, I kind of like you at the beginning it, it was terrible i was failing and i was bombing big time and it, it kind of took some time to kind of like yeah. put it a little bit into shape and when did your paths cross with Ahmed Ahmed? Because he's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. Well, Ahmed came to Egypt when I was hosting my show. Oh. And they, they did like a big comedy event. And I was at that time the biggest star from Egypt. So I hosted the show. Wow. It was Ahmed Ahmed, Naz Jubrani. Uh, ma many people actually came. Like it was like a, I, I, ho I hosted these shows and many people came and, and, and I was the host. So. This is how I met them. And I knew Ahmed and Maz from the Axis of Evil tour. So oh. for me, they were like someone idols that I, I was, was, I was a doctor watching. It's like, oh my God, they have the Muslims making fun of the whole thing. And for me, it was uh, kind of, they were impressed of who I am in Egypt, but I was actually kind of, I'm the one who's mm -hmm. like fanning over them because uh, I saw them in television before they saw me. Yeah. We had Namir on. Oh, right? yeah. We did have Namir on. Do you know Namir? Nimr. Nimr, oh, yeah. Nimr. I can't believe we fucked it up when he was here. He can't. He can't stop laughing. <laughs> Nimr. Yeah. Uh, Nimr. is one of the greatest guys. He's uh. He's lovely. He's very funny, and yes. I have been on his podcast a few a few times. He's a he's a lovely person. Yeah, he, he's a uh, he's the Richard Pryor of LeBron of uh what's Lebanon? that? Yeah, Lebanon. Yeah, Lebanon, man, Lebanon. Lebanon. Guys, what? I, I, you don't even, LeBron, what you know the, the fuck, man? You don't even have a passport. What the fuck? No, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, why you are basically deepening the stereotypes of stupid Americans who don't no, can, cannot <laughs> cannot I pronounce no like. I mean, I mean, I'm fine of like mispronouncing names, but you, you can't even say Lebanon. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Lebanon and LeBron. I mean, how ignorant are you? <laughs> <laughs> I it take no offense. I totally <laughs> agree. <laughs> when we're kids, no, listen, this is important. It's fine to mess up the name of Basim or Nemer. These are strange names, but dudes, these are countries that have been there forever. <laughs> Don't you fucking know your fucking geography? <laughs> what, do, you, do, you, do you look at the map and you say Brazil or do you see Brazil? You know, Brazil? <laughs> I, think I, saw, I think I say Brazil. <laughs> Come on, man. No, they don't. Listen, listen, uh, Yusuf. Basim. Basim. <laughs> no, they don't teach us geography here. And it was a plot. It was a conspiracy. To make us not 
understand the names of the countries. I think that they should teach comedy in school. Oh, please. You think that? I think they should, should te teach them how to do taxes. I think. Oh, yeah, that. that would be great, too. What? How to do cat taxes and oh, how to do taxes. Yes. That could be good. Mm. I agree. <laughs> now, uh, I, I want to respect your time, so I just have two more questions for you. Um, you have a podcast, and I wanted to ask you, is it uh, – because I'm sure you've interviewed people who you don't see eye to eye with, but I'm sure you also interview people you do see eye to eye with. Like, what are some tips on that? You know, uh, like uh, well, I, I used to have a podcast. Like, it was I did one season. It was very good. It was called uh, Remade in America, and um, most of the people that I interviewed were wonderful. It was focusing on people who are different. Uh, but there's one person that I was totally disagreeing with. It's like Canadian guy, Peterson. The guy... Jordan. Is, what? Jordan Peterson. Yeah, the, the guy who's like, he's revered by the right and whatever. He's a huge conservative. From yeah, Canada. and I kind of like, you know, I was very respectful <laughs> of him, but I called him out on so many of his shit. Yeah. And, he, and him as like being, you know, a scholar of philosophy, he was like just like answering very controlled and very like like kind of like twisted manner, but uh, I kind of was very respectful, kind of like made him think that I'm on his side. Then I boom, kind of like throw him with the stuff that. Uh, what do you think of Borat? The, the Israel? Oh no, he's not Israeli. No, no, he's not Israeli. Uh, he's, he's British. Jew here, American Jew. No, he's an English Jew. He's an English Jew. Borat. And, uh, how, think, how do you think about his? Well, son? first of all, Sa Sasha. I'm like, like let's talk about, about the actor Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, I think he's one of the most fucking most talented people ever. He's a genius. He's a fucking genius. He is a fucking genius. <laughs> not and not just like you know, not not when he was doing Ali G or Borat. Oh, and I, I, <laughs> he when he did the um, uh, like he just had a movie on the Netflix called The Chicago's The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Oh, I didn't see. Like that. incredible performance, incredible acting. So the guy is just a genius. That's number one. No. Number two, Borat is a kind of like, you know, comedy that could be offensive to a lot of people. Oh. In it. But I think he is, I mean, I think the fact that he's pushes, pushing the limits and pushing the envelopes like nobody else did, I think, I think we need that. I think we, we do need that. I mean, a lot of people will, will find whatever he say offensive. Well, don't, don't watch it. I, I enjoy no, but it. It, it, it it's, it's, I think you represent satire that's at that level. Uh, it's intelligence and, and you're going after the intelligence within you know the comedy. You're not. You're not just saying dick jokes like, like I did bosom. But uh, you know, uh, yeah, but Borat is using. Yeah. He, but Borat is using absolute hilarity and absolute trash, in order to kind of like send a very intelligent message. Yeah, it's yeah. like through his stupidity yeah. that he, it's kind of like he levels with the same kind of stupidity that we see, and it's it's brilliant. He's also a very good singer. Like he was in this movie called a uh, Sweeney Todd. Mm. And uh, I'm going to say this name wrong. So I don't even want to say it, but uh, it was like with Hugh Jackman and he, he's like a good, he's like apparently an award-winning singer too. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's just massively talented and very respectful. I really li like him. And then my last question for you is, you're headlining clubs now. Uh, what, what's advice for like guys like me or Alan to become uh, there, there, I can't. I can't give you that advice. I'm new to this. I'm. I am. I'm trying to find my way myself. I am in no position whatsoever to give any kind of advice. Uh, I, I. I. It is very. It's very. Uh, I. Every time I go out, I'm. To have this handicap of of speaking and performing in your second language will always be with you and will always be something on your mind that you worry that you can mess up so it is um it's it's always hanging there do you have any fears when you perform all the time yeah like what what what's the biggest fear you have when you perform that they don't laugh oh really <laughs> a, 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 a silent room yeah that, that's, that's a that's a big that's fear everybody. of mine too. that's everybody, yeah, everybody. Fear. Yeah. Well, Be Bezam, uh, thank you so much. Uh, where can the folks follow you at home to support you? And yeah, uh, well, uh, Instagram at Besom. That's it. All right. 
Well, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. During, I know thank it's you. late. Thank, thank you. you so much for being so flexible and changing the time more than thank once. You. Of thank course, you definitely. Uh, thank you, guys. All right. Thank well, thank you. you, and we'll 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 tweet you when it's out in a couple weeks. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, all right, guys. So that was uh, the interview with uh, Basum Yusuf. Subscribe, rate, and review. Alan Lee. All yeah, right. We, you got we, nothing to say to the fans at home? Well, I say this. I, I, I enjoyed meeting this gentleman in uh, Class Act, and uh, we're going to see more of him. You know, he may even come back to the show. Uh, very sophisticated guy. You know, uh, uh, a lot of comics uh, are just new, certainly not doctors. I mean, some of them barely got through high school. And uh, yeah. you know, he, he, this is a, a full medical doctor from Egypt. That's not an easy feat because, uh, you know, they have high standards for their doctors. And uh, so do we. But, you know, he's not joking. Haha, he's not joking around about uh, his background. And that's quite a transition. I know there's a, a couple of doctors that actually are comics. And uh, it's an interesting. There's another there's a couple that are actually uh, here that were doctors. Because, you know, doctors think it's very funny when they cut someone open. And they're very filthy. I remember when I was in, in college uh, in a fraternity, I couldn't believe the guys who were in medical school, the way they laughed at the things they found when they cut someone open was just really, really dark, dark comedy. Yeah. Hey, look at I, this liver. It's got well, all this Well, I got to get going, man. But uh, going? Subs no, no, hold subscribe, on. brain review to the folks. Where and are you uh, going? At this time of the night, where are you going? Going to bed, man. We gotta end the show. Oh, the way you acted, I thought you were leaving town or something. Yeah. Do you have any stand-up gigs coming up, Alan? Yeah, I have one uh, next week uh, where I'm going to get out of my chair, like this one right here. Oh, this look. And I'm standing up. Here it is. And I'll be doing that Thursday. Right All right. Now. Excellent. Well, subscribe, rate, review to the show. On Apple Podcasts, tell a friend. And uh, all right. Go to Patreon. Yeah, go to Patreon. Uh, help couple, us. Throw a couple uh, of dollars. Yeah. Away. All right. We're rocking and rolling. Be careful. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.